Hey, what's happening guys? Got another video for you today and we're going to be looking at the remote play aspects of the PlayStation Vita. If you want to skip ahead to the setup process, that's cool. I'll leave a link in the description or an annotation in the video itself here. You can check that out. But anyway, in my last video, I talked about how I absolutely loved the PlayStation Vita system. I still do and how great of an experience it is to play games on this thing. Now, when I initially posted that video, a lot of you were telling me how much of a filthy ape I was for not properly cleaning my PlayStation Vita system before I put it out on camera, and I'm sorry for that. The gloss is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. But what a lot of people were also telling me was, hey man, you didn't talk at all about remote play, one of the best aspects of the Vita system. It was only until recently until I realized how awesome remote play is, but a lot of people don't understand it or at least know about it. Now I see a lot of misinformation online. A lot of people are saying like, oh, you can't do it if you don't have good upload and download speeds on your own home network. And that's not true. If you're abroad, if you're in like China and your PlayStation 4 is at home, and if you're using your Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone, then of course you're probably going to have a lot of lag. It's gonna be dependent on the connection your PlayStation 4 is having at home and the connection that your phone has to internet. But when you want to simply kick back on the couch with a game of, say, Persona 5 or Uncharted 4 on your PlayStation Vita system in the same home on the same network that the PlayStation 4 is using, you should be able to do it just fine unless you have a severe hardware bottleneck. Really, the only ways you're not going to be able to do this is, one, you're connecting to the PS4 directly via remote play, so that you're not connecting over your network. Two, your PS4 does not have a ethernet connection and the Wi-Fi in your house is crappy. Or three, if you're using a wired connection, the only way you would be bottlenecked is if your equipment is 20 to 30 years old, which I really doubt that's the case if you're using a PlayStation 4 system in the year 2017. I should also mention that there is remote play technically on the PlayStation 3 system. The problem is, is that you can't really get it working most of the time, at least in my experience, and when you do, there's not a lot of games that support it anyway. The remote play we're going to be talking about today is primarily for the PlayStation 4 system. You can get the app for remote play on a variety of systems, including Sony compatible phones, the PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation Vita TV, your own computer, so you can get it on Mac or Windows. I know for Windows you need 8.1 or higher. I will leave the specs in the description below if you want to check out the PC app for remote play. But let's talk about the best way to play your PS4 games on the go or in bed or wherever or on the toilet, the Vita system itself. All right, so let's boot up into an actual game here. Now, I just had this issue, and I'm glad it happened so I can talk about it. There are some issues with remote play that I have at least experienced. For example, sometimes when I start the PS4, it just does a boot loop where it just shuts itself off back into rest mode. That's another thing. If you want to connect to your PS4 while it's quote-unquote off, which it technically, again, isn't, you will need to have it in rest mode if you want to access it at all times without it being on 24-7. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Also, if your PS4 crashes, you might need to configure it with the controller, get past a few, you know, oh, your PS4 shut off unexpectedly screens, and so you might need to navigate to that with the actual PS4 using an actual controller before you can trigger remote play. That kind of sucks if you're out of your house and you can't access it like that. Right, we're gonna boot up to the menu of Persona 5 just so we can avoid spoilers, but I wanna showcase the input latency, which is pretty damn low. There is going to be some, but you're not going to discern it too much. Unless you're really playing a fighting game online, you're probably not going to notice any difference. Also, excuse the style of recording here. It looks like a mid-2000s YouTube video. As you can see right there, buttons all work just fine. There's no discernible lag on my end, at least. Skip ahead here. I'm keeping the sound off because I don't want to get copyright striked by Atlas. But yeah, you can see here, no input lag. Let's get to the menus. Looking sexy. So, as you can probably tell by now, let's get back down here. Mm. As you can probably tell, you don't have the full array of physical buttons as you would on a DualShock 4 controller. That's because the Vita makes use of the touchscreen and the touchpad to make up the rest of the buttons. So your L3, your R3, your L2, and your R2. So one of the biggest issues I have with developers and how they're doing remote play on the Vita system is how they bind the virtual buttons. For the most part, they leave it default on the back of the system, but some put it on the front. Now the problem with this is 
generally speaking, they do not allow you to rebind your buttons, which is a big problem, especially if you use third-party accessories like this one. This is from JEC. So this relies on the virtual buttons being by default on the back. And I get that developers are trying to add, you know, a little bit extra functionality. They're trying to do a little bit of effort in remote play. But the problem is if they don't give you an option to do the defaults, you kind of get screwed over. So in games like Bloodborne, you have L3, excuse me, L2 and R2 up here, and you don't have access to them unless you use your thumbs on the touch screen. And that's a bit of a problem because here, as you can see, it works just fine if you want to use the triggers and just have them make contact with buttons over here. So you have access to your camera with this particular unit. By the way, this is available for the Vita Model 1000 as well, if you're wondering. There's not a lot of remote play Vita Model 1000 accessories. I'll talk about another accessory over here, but it's only for the 2000 so far as I've seen. So you have access to the memory card, you have access to your headphone jack, your micro USB over here, and it sits comfortably in the system. The only problem I have is that it has a bit of a death grip. You have to really push it out in a certain angle and that can lead to scratching of your system. I can't even get it out right now. Let me just unplug. Oh boy. You have to be holding it at a very specific angle and pushing it a very specific side. It's a pain in the ass to take it out, so you're gonna to wanna to keep that in for the most part, but if you're traveling, you wanna have this thing as slim as possible to fit in your pocket or your bag, so that is a bit of a problem. Also, once again, there's no L3 and R3 physical buttons on the back. You do have this space where you can push your fingers on there, but it's still not ideal. But it is very comfortable to hold the system now. In fact, I actually cannot go back to doing this by itself. I actually use the other accessory I have over here all the time for my system or this one because the Vita system, you know, it's comfortable, but it's not comfortable enough for those eight hour long gaming sessions. So here is one final accessory. This one is from Hori. This is basically the same idea as the JEC one, only this one as L3 and R3 buttons, which is really cool. So you slide that in right there. It's held on with basically three latches that are rubberized and doesn't scratch up your system at all. It does add quite a bit of weight and the triggers themselves feel a lot mushier and you do not have access to your memory card port, but here's the thing. The locking mechanism is once again a lot better as you can clearly see. The L3 and R3 buttons on the back are worth it for extra compatibility. And even though it is a bit heavier, and I really don't have anything to say to defend the L2 and R2, they're just kind of mushy, they get the job done, but they're whatever. But because this thing is a lot thicker now, not too thick, but thick enough that you can really grasp it, it's a lot more comfortable to hold. Yeah, it does weigh a little bit more, but I don't have to bend my thumbs in as much like I had to do with this guy. If you take a look at the size comparison, pretty much dwarfs it. It's not a bad unit, the JEC one, but the big issue I have is just the lack of buttons and the locking mechanism where you just have to get it out of its death grip. But this thing, a lot more comfortable to hold. The only problem, of course, are those L2 and R2 buttons. They're mushy, they're plastic, unlike these, which are metal, but they are connected to some sort of plastic on the back there. So neither of these solutions will be absolutely perfect especially when developers like to throw their buttons on the front here, but they will be a hell of a lot better for the most part than just simply using the Vita like this. In fact, I actually use this grip even when I'm not doing remote play because it's just so comfortable. So I would also take that into consideration. You know, $30 for some comforting grips, eh, might be a lot of money, but when you consider the fact that you can do a lot of remote play games on these things and it's a lot easier to do it, it suddenly becomes a very compelling value for 30 bucks. The ability to play all your games, or almost all of them, excuse me, on the toilet or on the bed, are you kidding me? That's awesome. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for today. I'm going to be showing you the setup process for hooking up your PS4 to your Vita for remote play right now. So stay tuned if you want to see that. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I'm out. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit up on the D-pad when you're in your home menu and go into the settings of your PS4 system. Scroll all the way down to your remote play connection settings and enable remote play. Now, there are two ways to connect to your PS4 system with your Vita. The first is over your network. So your Vita needs to be connected to the Wi-Fi network in your house and your PS4 to that same network. However, you're gonna want an ethernet cable if you wanna do that because the PS4 Wi-Fi and connecting and doing remote play 
is kind of poopy. So you're going to want a Ethernet cable coming from your PS4 to your router or your switch or whatever, and then your Vita connecting to a reliable access point or your router's Wi-Fi. Now, if you don't want to go through that and you're like, okay, I can't hook up my PS4 with an Ethernet cable, and even if I do, it's still giving me a couple issues, you want to have connect directly with your PS Vita and PS TV enabled then, because what that'll do is it lets you directly connect your Vita to your PS4 wirelessly without a router. Now the only problem with this option is that if you are, let's say you're going to go to the bathroom and you want to bring your system with you, if you're too far away from your system, you will lose connection. And it can be generally flaky to begin with, even if you're next to your PS4 system with your Vita, because there are issues like the electronics around you, although that can still affect your network connection on your Vita, because again, that's going through wireless as well. So it all depends on you. However, the best way that I found is just simply doing it through your network. And also this is the same setting you want to disable, not only for your network, if you want to connect it that way, but if you're going abroad and you want to connect to your phone's mobile Wi-Fi and connect to your PS4 at home. So you go over here and you enter that code on the remote play app on your PS Vita system. All right, so now that you've selected your system settings, you want to go to the PS4 link app on your PS Vita system. This should be a default app. So you click that, you hit start. Now you have the option for remote play or second screen, but before we do that, we're gonna go to the bubble down here with three dots, click on that, click the settings button that pops up, change PS4 system to connect to for remote play, click that, that should be the top option. And now you have the option to put in that code that we saw on the PlayStation 4. You have 300 seconds to enter that code. If not, it resets and gives you another code and times out. But that's how you do that. It's pretty simple. Also, you have an option for video quality for remote play. This all depends on how good your Wi-Fi setup is in your house. Again, if you're connecting directly to your PS4 system, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But again, that can still be very flaky because once again, the Wi-Fi on the PS4 is a bit poopy when connecting directly to the Vita. However, if you're doing a local area network connection or LAN with an Ethernet cable from your PS4 to your router or whatever, and you're connecting your Vita to Wi-Fi, you should be good to go. Again, it all depends on how well your house is set up. If you have Wi-Fi covering your entire house, some areas you might have dead zones. It's typical Wi-Fi stuff, but the remote play settings are a little bit more demanding because, again, you're streaming an entire game rather than loading up a web browser. So you have the option to go for the Vita's native resolution of 540p. Oh God, excuse me, I can't even speak today. Anyway, or low 360p. You should have no issues connecting in general. If you can't even do 360p at medium or your standard frame rate, you might wanna check your Wi-Fi equipment or your settings on your PS4 just in case, but you should have no problem unless, again, you have incredibly old hardware or there's something wrong with your cable setup or your Wi-Fi or whatever. But generally speaking, I've been able to do 540p at high frame rate settings, which is basically no drops in your frame rate, and everything has been really, really smooth. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Sorry about the long-winded tutorial. I'll see you next time. I'm out.